This is what Formula 1 looked like on the PC before World Circuit was released. This is World Circuit, more commonly known as Formula 1 Grand Prix. Any questions? I could end the quick review right there, couldn't I? But I won't. Jeff Crammond was a defense industry systems engineer with a degree in physics, who decided to program games. His first motorsport game was 1984's Revs, where he tried to realistically simulate Formula 3, the simulation bit becoming a trademark of his games. With the emergence of the Amiga, Atari ST and more powerful VGA-capable IBM compatibles, Crammond was able to go further than had ever been seen before, with a technological leap that would leave his competitors in the dust. Designed and programmed by Crammond for Microprose with a small team of graphics and sound people and one additional programmer, Grand Prix was essentially a flight simulator but featuring Formula One vehicles and a track instead. You could tweak your car to an unparalleled degree, play through full races and seasons, and edit driver and team names. There were real physics and a sense of weight and inertia to everything. And if your machine could handle it, you could get 25 frames a second too, which looked buttery smooth on the old CRTs, and better than any other Formula 1 game out there. It was an evolution of everything found in revs, and the only thing comparable was the stateside Indianapolis 500 by Papyrus, who are worth mentioning in the same breath as between the two of them they revolutionised motorsport games in the 90s. But it was Crammon's work that would go on to become critically lauded, with its brilliant design decisions, customizability, and friendly driving aids, allowing for all kinds of players to enjoy it. This meant that it often placed near the top spot on the best games of all time lists, and the ever popular worldwide success of Formula One meant that people would seek out his games. With its intuitive menu systems and ability to simulate both track topography and an entire season's worth of play, the only issue the game had was the lack of license, meaning you would need to either edit in the correct driver and team names or download a file from the internet. So whether you wanted to fly along Monaco manually shifting gears and making sure that your tyres were correct, or simply wanted to follow a helpful white line and let the computer do everything from guided steering to auto braking, or even if you wanted to turn invincibility on and play bumper cars in an arcade-like extravaganza, Formula One Grand Prix had you covered. It was the definitive Grand Prix simulator for five years running, which in the 90s was a ridiculous amount of time and is the equivalent of about 20 years of development in the here and now, with most of the 30 plus releases from competitors in that time choosing to opt for a more arcade style of play rather than go nose to nose with it around the track. So why isn't Formula One Grand Prix World Circuit the standard bearer for race sims in the DOS era? Why is it only a clutch of petrolhead Atari and Amiga enthusiasts singing its praises? Well, for us DOS fans, Grand Prix 2 exists, which had 3D texture mapping, SVGA, and a full Formula 1 license. His dominance of the genre would continue well into the 21st century, as community modification for Grand Prix 4 extended the life of his last game prior to Microprose's dissolution. So if you tire of the SimKid Codemasters F1 series and want a real driving game, or just want to see how far retro DOS driving can be pushed, go look at Jeff Crammon's work and see just what you've been missing out on. It's been over 20 years now since his last game, and people are still wanting to know where he is, when he'll offer an alternative to the sad state Formula One racing has become.